Hello again. In this next section, we'll discuss the components of an organization of muscle fibers. Now, there is so much to learn about the physiology of muscle cells and so much that is still being discovered. In this course, we're going to keep it fairly simple, and I'd like you to be able to describe the functions and characteristics of the main components of a muscle cell, describe how an action potential travels through the muscle fiber, and describe the basics of the sliding filament mechanism. So back to a cellular level, we're looking here at one muscle fiber. So we can think about this blown up to what we see here. So the outside of a cell is its plasma membrane. So in a muscle cell, that's called the sarcolemma. Sarc refers to flesh. So we'll see this used in terms to describe muscle components frequently. So the sarcoplasm is the cytoplasm, or what is contained within that plasma membrane. So myofibrils make up the bulk of the sarcoplasm and are the contractile unit, but also maintain the structural integrity of the fiber. Myoglobin is an oxygen bonding protein, so important for oxygen transport. It's also pigmented, so it gives muscle its color. And glycogen allows for anaerobic respiration. So let's take a closer look at the structures in the sarcoplasm. Myofibrils extend the length of the muscle fiber and are composed of sarcomeres, which are the functional unit. So here we see one functional unit, and we'd find that this extends through that one myofibril. So multiple sarcomeres make up one myofibril. Now the sarcolemma extends toward the center of a cell as T-tubules, we can see here in pink. So at the sarcolemma, we see these invaginations which, of the sarcolemma, which are the T-tubules. Now the sarcoplasmic reticulum, kind of this meshwork that is all around here, is equivalent to the endoplasmic reticulum, and it's a fluid-filled system of membranous sacs that encircle the myofibrils. And in a relaxed muscle, the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium. So a neural action potential leads to the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, which initiates the muscle action potential in the sarcolemma. So this travels to all parts of the cell through the T-tubules, leading to the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So that calcium initiates a contraction of a sarcomere. And in this image, we can kind of see those functional units better in that this would contract. So remember that multiple sarcomeres make up one myofibril. So that's what is represented here in this image. Within a myofibril, we can see a sarcomere here that contains the contractile proteins that initiate motion. These are actin and myosin. Now let's really zoom in on the actin strand and imagine how this contraction is taking place. In general, the sliding filament mechanism within a sarcomere is initiated by calcium. And that opens binding sites on the actin to allow for myosin heads to walk along, leading to contraction of the sarcomere. So what we'll see on a large scale in this upper image is that these two strands will pass one another, leading to this distance shortening. So this is the shortening of one segment. Now each binding and unbinding of myosin requires ATP. So both calcium and ATP are essential for skeletal muscle function. We'll talk more about how a sarcomere and muscle fiber contraction contributes to changing the whole muscle in an upcoming video about types of contraction. Now for this question, I'd like you to point out and write the name of the following structures. The first is a functional unit of a muscle cell. The second, the location of actin and myosin within that cell. And third, 
the structure that carries the action potential to all areas of the cell. So take a few minutes to label the parts of this image and write down what you remember. Now when you're ready, let's discuss. For number one, a functional unit or that contractile unit, what is that called? That's going to be a sarcomere. And where do we see that on this image? We'll find extending longitudinally here, that is one sarcomere. Now for number two, where do we find those contractile proteins, actin and myosin? So that's going to be found within the myofibril. So where here do we see a myofibril? That's going to be this structure here that's isolated out and all of these along here. And now that we've labeled both a sarcomere and a myofibril, we can see that longitudinally, one myofibril is made up of multiple sarcomeres. Now finally, what is the structure that carries the action potential to all areas of the cell? So that will be the T-tubules. And what is this associated with? Which part of the cell? So the T-tubules are invaginations of the cell membrane or that sarcolemma. So that is what we're seeing here. And then in these holes, are where we'd follow in those T tubules. So you can see those weaving throughout the cell and diving deep into all aspects of the cell. Now these are surrounded by sarcoplasmic reticulum. That's this blue mesh work here. What is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum that will help initiate a contraction? That's going to be calcium. All right, great job. Thanks for sticking with me and I'll see you in the next video.